What is the significance of these two generals disappearing from view? Well, I think what we are seeing is the fallout from last weekend. Uh, yes, as you said, it doesn't, on the face of it, change much. But I think what we've what we've had an in, in, a, a glimpse of is a very, very scary future of Russia imploding into a civil war between warring factions led by brutes like Prigazin and their private armies. And Putin is definitely weakened. As far as these two generals, Sorovakin and and, and 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 one of his colleagues. Well, what happens when you get a mutiny like that is revenge is taken. So I'm sure they're probably sitting somewhere having the fingernails pulled out or something at the moment. Gosh. Um, I mean, there are reports that uh, the Wagner Group is still in Ukraine, possibly still active in Ukraine. That's what the Pentagon is saying. There's also reports that they're still recruiting. I just wonder how much of a headache Wagner as a group is, not only for Russia, but the wider world. How you even manage to control a group like this? Can Prigozhin still control them? Well, Putin's Putin's got to ride this tiger. He's allowed it to he's, he's allowed it to flourish and he's now got to suffer the consequences. Um as I say, you don't just get rid of uh, an organisation like Wagner overnight, and, and and Putin's got a real problem in doing so with with the challenge it poses him and his security. He has been weakened by this, uh, and the, the Russian state has been weakened. This, the Russian war effort has been weakened by this. Uh, it's not going to translate instantly into uh, weak, uh, Ukrainian victories, but remorselessly, resent relentlessly, the Ukrainians are regaining the initiative in uh, in the eastern Donbass, and Russia will pay the price. We are expecting a press conference by uh, Sergei Lavrov, the uh, Russian foreign minister, around nine o'clock this morning. Of course, we'll bring it to you here on Times Radio. I'm just wondering if you think now Putin is potentially more dangerous because of what's unfolded over the last week. I think that's an important point. Um, yes, he is. Uh, we've seen the way he escalated with the es with the destruction of the uh, the Kakovka Dam uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that was a really important strategic inflection point for NATO and the West, and that was the time for NATO to metaphorically poke Russia in the eye by giving Ukraine the means, making it make, making Russia recognise that if they escalate, they will pay the price. Uh, NATO did not do that. So now is the time for NATO to really get strong. And with the NATO summit coming up, this is a, a critical opportunity. Um, because Putin, as he gets weaker, could lash out very easily. He's seen with the Kakovka Dam escalation that there were no consequences, and he may just decide to destroy the Zaporizhia power plant, for example. Or it's an easy step from there to a tactical nuclear weapon. And the only way to respond here is to be really tough on Russia. As a senior intelligence official said to me recently in Kiev, there's only one way to deal with Russia, hit it in the face and then talk. Gosh, so what does that looking strong by NATO look like? It means giving, first of all, it means recognising that this is a war not just against Ukraine, it's a war against NATO, it's a war against the West. And we need to change our mindset we need to prepare for war. And all the shenanigans going on in the Ministry of Defence this morning with the reports of the Chief of the General Staff resigning because the army is being cut to ribbons, do not send a message of strength. They send a message of shambles and weakness. And across the alliance, the alliance needs to gird its loins for the worst case, particularly going back to what I said earlier, if Russia is on its way to descending into a state of chaos, a state of chaos, with 6,000 nuclear weapons. So there is a real threat, and NATO has got to be prepared to put a band of deterrent steel around Eastern Europe to include Ukraine. We need to see a message, a clear invitation to Ukraine to join NATO as soon as conditions allow at the NATO summit. And then in the shorter term, what we should be doing is ramping up the capability of Ukraine to really hit Russia hard, give Ukraine the missiles required to sink the Black Sea fleet and to drop the Kirsch Bridge once and for all remove the restriction on Ukraine from targeting Russian assets, Russian capabilities in Russia. Ukraine has an inalienable right to self-defense and they should be able to hit back where they need to. Uh, so the message must be one of strength, not weakness. And at the moment, I fear very much that it's one of weakness.